truly cannot if there are five or more, which implies, and I still would like to hear that back from the Pete County Attorney, that if there aren't, we can. So I, I don't know if it can be codified in such a way, though. That's what we need to still determine. Uh, I think not, but. Uh, I, I, well, I will sort of follow up on that. That'd be great. We, we clarified uh, uh, absence keys removal. Um, we, uh, you know, just kind of, we, we referenced the code, Chapter 6, Title 4, 100, where we thought it was appropriate, therefore we're going to have to individually identify that in the bylaws. Um, and we will uh, follow Robert's Rules of Order to agree to that committee as needed, you know, to, for meeting control. Um, and uh, I think everything else is pretty uh, straightforward. In terms of um, uh, replacing them, we, had to, we also talked about the term, uh, the, the number of consecutive terms that we have been serving. We limited that to 12 years. But I changed the wording. This was after the right now and went back to Marcy to reflect what the code said. So I replaced that with 6,400, which is consistent with what the board of supervisors has set forth in the um, And there's no term. Excuse me? Is there, there's no term on um, that? Yeah. Functionally, functionally, there is not. So, but, and so I thought a lot about what could be done, right? Mm -hmm. So there are two options. If the, if the board, if the um, advisory committee has a strong feeling about limiting the term of service, there are two, two things that, we can, that can be done. Uh, first of all, let's acknowledge that this is really not an issue until 12 years down the road. Sure. So we can kind of kick the can. Sure. Uh, and in terms, of, in terms of modifying the actual ordinance to reflect that right. term limit. Number two, and that would be a, that would be a way of um, codifying it so that so the actual ordinance language articulates that. Number two, we could say that it would be and that the advisory committee would send the appointing individual an advisory letter mm -hmm. at, the, at that 12 uh, year point, uh, and having them reconsider whether they want to reappoint. At that point, it becomes the individual um, supervisor or the individual um, organizational entity's job to decide whether they want to reappoint or not. But at the very least, um, this advisory committee could let them know that that would be a preference. That might be a different way. That would not require a change in the code. Yeah, yeah. and I think, I think where we were going with that is we were just trying to say as a community that it might be a good idea for us to refresh ourselves after mm -hmm. 12 years. So I think that's a great approach that you're taking in light of, yes, we can change the code later, um, but, but for all of us, we were kind of concerned about you know eternal membership with, with no new vision, no direction going there. Again, it's going to be coterminous for most of the appointees with whoever they're elected is, as far as that goes, which also can provide some change. Um, but that might be a great alternative right. moving and, forward. And for the benefit of the public, it, 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 they should also know that it can be removed at a little pleasure by the appointment. The other thing we did, we added that quarterly meeting mm -hmm. at yes. these different jurisdictions. Right. So that we will once every quarter. Not mine. <laughs> else, it's great. No, it's, yeah, it just works really well on that. The nice thing that was your idea, Gail, was to, to make it quarterly at their discretion. So we, if if we offer the opportunity for Oro Valley, Marana, City of Tucson to host this meeting, and they say, yeah, we don't have space or we don't have a thing, that's fine. We'll still hold it where we always hold it, and then we'll bump list-wise down to the next person available and reset it that way. So you give them the opportunity, but it's not a mandatory that it must occur in that jurisdiction at that time. Pat, if you want to make any comments because you were part of that, I, oh, yeah. was hearing your, I was hearing your voice from my office. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're always good for me. You know, I thought that I, the term limits was <clears throat> something that I wasn't really clear about because we're appointed. So if, if you're appointed by somebody and your term is up, you know, they don't want you to be off the committee. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the 12 years came in the bucket. Down the 12 years, I think that's going to be a bigger problem. And I like the idea of us having our meetings in other jurisdictions because Andy's representing all the jurisdictions and they should all have that opportunity to see how this committee operates and works. 
I realize that, that the rest of the committee members have not had a chance to sort of look at this document in any great depth. Um, they have, we have shared with you a, the, a very preliminary draft from last time, um, but I don't feel, uh, unless you advise me otherwise, I don't feel that I can put you on the spot and ask you to vote on uh, these bylaws. I, what I would propose, and um, and I will look to your uh, to you for guidance, um, is that we would take these uh, bylaws under advisement, um, and that the first um, meeting action um, at the next meeting would be to actually adopt the bylaws. I believe that we can continue with the other items that we have on our agenda, uh, even if if we do not um, vote on the bylaws. But I will do um, whatever the group uh, concurs. Um, I think that would be fair. Um, uh, I wanted to thank through you, if you will, thank Marcy, because mm -hmm. she spent time on her weekend uh, you know, working with me on the telephone and uh, getting back out by Tuesday. And, um, we just couldn't turn around again. Yeah. I, I had a suggestion for the committee's consideration on the tip for next week or whenever we decide to do this. Um, the uh, under meetings, item one, it says regular meetings are going to on the third Thursday of each month. And the meetings start at 4 p.m. I think that would be on uh, page, uh, page three. Page three. Yeah, page three. Page three at the top. <laughs> Um, I wanted to just ask the committee if they would consider that we, uh, on the third Thursday of each month, that they can be changed on an, on an individual basis at the, at the discretion of the committee. Given that we may want to change from a Thursday occasionally, uh, let's say it's around holiday time or whatever. So that was just my suggestion. Like somehow we cut that out when we need to. Right. It's, in the past, we have done that. Around the holidays, we have taken a vote and maybe like the November or December meeting one meeting. And the board of health has done that too. I know I don't think that was ever in the bylaws though. I don't, I don't know if you have to put it in the bylaws. I think very operationally if I may, I think the piece that ties back into that is that um, per my, our city clerk's notification process, it has to be listed when the meetings are for posting regularly and it is normally incorporated in the founding documents for whatever organization is. But as Dr. Smith is saying, we can actually take um, a vote at a given meeting to say uh, move to all to that next meeting so this date at this month making sure it's clear. So I think we can still meet that. I, I don't think there's any reason why we wouldn't all support that. Um, obviously trying to hold a meeting with the Thanksgiving is probably not a good choice when that falls that way or those kind of things. So I hear you though. I mean we need to make that. I wasn't sure okay. from the previous yeah. comments of the county attorney's office whether <coughs> This would be really very from this, so I just want to. Sure. It does say at the discretion of the committee. Yeah. So that gives us that leeway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, I thought that applied to the second sentence. So I'm not sure. All right. On that item, though, I think it's really important that everybody looks at that four to six timeline. So we were trying to really kind of um, make the, the staff thing a little bit easier on, on Pima County support staff because, again, they're generally, unless they're exempt, they're either going to be getting overtime, uh, which probably won't be looked upon too happily, and or they're exempt working a lot of extra hours to help staff this meeting. So we kind of went with a hybrid model there, saying, okay, let's not go five to like seven, let's bump it to four to six, and then let's try to control our agenda, which is the chair's job working with staff, so that we get enough on there to deal with, but not overload those meetings, so we're going for three and four hour marathons, which you really don't get much done most of the time with those anyways. I would love to, before we close the discussion on this particular item, I would love to make sure that the folks who did not participate in the discussion have a chance to articulate any questions or concerns um, before we sort of say that we're, we're moving on to the next item. Um, any, any thoughts uh, about what's been talked about? Hi, Mom. I'm wondering, and I, I missed the last meeting, so I witnessed the intervention. And I, and I missed my agenda to have all of the folks <laughs> reintroduce yeah. themselves, so, but we're going to do it in a second. I'll, I'll just introduce myself to the thing. I'm Rhonda Pena. And the timeline for me, I originally when I thought we were going to be meeting at 5.30, that schedule worked for me, so I apologize because it's a 4 o'clock time. 
that I have meeting before this meeting, so for me personally, it's not going to be a good time. Is that because of the Thursday? The third Thursday. It's the third Thursday. Yeah, the meeting that comes on. Uh, Dr. Garcia, um, we did have a discussion about public access to meetings. Mm -hmm. My preference is that we continue to have them in mind, but I don't I, I, I didn't feel prepared to overrule the balance of whatever the general committee wants. Um, just because if we if we do have a controversial issue for people that may be working with it's easier for sure to attend. And then the position that the balance of us kind of talked about is that we also have the benefit of calling a special meeting for that activity because the purpose of this group is to be advisory to board of supervisors uh, and and to work on the issues within. We're not necessarily a public hearing body every single time something comes out. In fact, if an issue is that controversial or um, concerning for the community, it's going to go before the board for action and decision, and they also have calls on it's times. But we absolutely could call a night meeting, a separate meeting, at time to make it easily accessible for anybody who's there. That's an open in the bylaws discretion. The issue would be if the commission can't make it, we need to figure that out. And, and, and so maybe so maybe the way we figure that out is if Thursday continues to be the preferred date for the meeting, you know, does the, the second Thursday or the fourth right. Thursday um, meet still be our... We went with that based on history, not that we truly have right. preference, because exactly. we had flexibility in our own group talking about it, but we stuck... With I'd rather have the flexibility with the with the time with the with the day of the right. week as the time because I think the four to six is going to work better for the majority and, and, and as as the discussion's gone. But that doesn't mean we can't change the day. Yeah, no, and that's okay. And I I would not want anybody to change the whole meeting oh, time for one person. <laughs> <laughs> but if, 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 if we could accommodate this by maybe say the second. Thursday. I mean, and, and you guys are all here, but we're fortunate enough to have everybody here in attendance to, to weigh in. But that would be an easy fix. Uh, second, uh, to, uh, second Thursday, um, and um, and the four to six time frame, uh, with the idea that uh, what Andy articulated is, is true, which is if an extraordinary meeting is, is required to be called. That means we're going to get to have have our meeting in. November, because we're not going to be on the week of Thanksgiving. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's I, I will say what I'm going to say. It's not like for me as well, because I have a small minority women's business commission meeting, like right before <coughs> on, on most of those Thursdays, and it's like, ah, it's great. That's so, the yeah. issue. Yeah. Commission. Sure. So, um, I, are there any other comments from the rest of the membership? This is probably the most important, um, the most important uh, action at least initially, that you'll take during the next meeting uh, will be to vote on these bylaws. Are there any other uh, opinions that need to be expressed, um, especially by, by, by folks who have not had a chance to, um, to think about this a little bit more? Hearing none, uh, what I'll do is I will um, move on to the next agenda item, which should have been the first agenda item, and that is that uh, we have Four people here today who were not available uh, during our first meeting, and uh, it might be useful to not just have them introduce themselves, but for us to very, very briefly, because there's a lot of us, reintroduce the whole group. But Rhonda, why don't we start off with you? Thank you. Good evening. My name is Rhonda Pena, and I was um, appointed by Ramon Valadez with District 2 to be on the committee. And then I work, in my regular job, I work for Wells Fargo Commercial Banking Services. And I became affiliated with the Animal Care Center because I served as the bond treasurer for the Animal Care Center campaign. And so, <laughs> yes, but I had great people to work with. So it was a, it was a wonderful team. And, and so in getting involved in that whole process, it, it really engaged me. And so when this opportunity came up, it was really a no-brainer to say, yes, I really want to help out. And one step further from that, I have a rescue dog that I absolutely love. And I just believe it's a great, a great mission that, that the Animal Care Center does. And so um, 
Um, I'm Kristen Alquist, and I do marketing strategies and community engagement here in the community. Dr. Donald, you're my vet, mm -hmm. and don't tell him that my small cat is 16 pounds. We <laughs> won't tell you about the larger one. <laughs> um, but I love our community and got involved uh, really with the 415 campaign as well, and it really introduced me to PAC and all the volunteers and all the activities and, and all the progress that PAC has been made. So I'm just thrilled to be part of this. I'm Suzanne Yerby, and I was appointed by Alan Miller, District 1. And my uh, experience with PAC is I rescue dogs. I have two rescue dogs at home, and all my children are adult children with their own homes, and they rescue. Uh, Thanksgiving morning, we're done with PAC uh, every year, walking the dogs. It's a tradition. Uh, so my, uh, my goal is to just be here to make sure that we're doing the best we can for the animals of Pima County. I'm a true animal lover, and that's why I'm here. I still want to keep going that way. Oh, okay. Um, Christy Oliver, I'm a volunteer at Human Animal Care. I've been volunteering for a few years. Um, I am a quality assurance manager in my, my regular day job. Um, and yeah, I'm also an advocate and really want to help uh, do our best for them. And yes, I started a program called Rough Runner, so I have, I guess, uh, twice a week to walk to run. I'm Gary uh, Gillespie, and uh, I'm also, I can check out Gary's appointment, but I'm uh, also a volunteer at PAC, and um, I've been working there a few years like Christy, um, and I had a lot of years of a community experience, um, and uh, I forgot to tell you the last time, I had four rescues, and two of them are from PAC, and, uh, and Dr. Obama is my <laughs> I'm Pat Hubbard, and I'm one of the original ones. I've been on the committee for many, many years representing the Humane Society of Southern Arizona, which is where I've been working for the last 27 years. <laughs> and uh, I'm Sharon Bronson's appointment to this committee. Hi, my name is Paul Seth. I am the um, division leader at PAC to oversee the operations, and I'm Chuck. And I'm Francis Garcia, and I'm just your temporary host. <laughs> <laughs> director of the health department. And the, the, um, the, I have the pleasure of, as part of our portfolio of responsibilities, overseeing the, the PAC operation. Do I introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Michael, I'm the coordinator, so I'm the one does all the paperwork and sends all the emails and posts and things like that. I'm Jamie and I've been in the rescue world for about 15 years. I sat on the back end committee before and I'm the chair of the Panhandle Care Center. Awesome. I'm Andy Squire. I'm uh, the appointee for the PAC partners, uh, so we're about to run it. So we've got South Tucson here and Tucson. Um, and uh, I work for the city manager, uh, Mike Ortega, city of Tucson, and, and economic development specialist and uh, manager of all special projects. And this is a very special project in a good way, um, <laughs> using special in the appropriate term. Uh, working closely with the uh, Animal Care Center to expand our licensing opportunities, uh, opening up the licensing center at the uh, Reed Park Administration, which is up and running, and then um, also the parent to a uh, uh, rescue dog actually took in my parents' rescue dog that they are too old to care for. So, rescue twice. Thank you. I'm Erin O'Donnell. I'm the uh, representative of the Southern Arizona Veterinary Medical Association. And uh, so I also am the veterinary for the Pima Paws for Life. Go out there once a week to um, their shelter. And um, technically, 12 rescues in my house, only four of them are reptiles in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Do you want to just briefly dip into yourself a lot? Yeah, I'm Dan Ekstrom. I'm a retired recovery politician. <laughs> Actually, I served on the Board of Supervisors for four terms, and, and also my involvement was you know, we had oversight. Approved budgets, 
I'm not sure what I'm doing here, but Richard and Leah's the supervisor of the West Bay Media Representative, so that's what I'm doing. That's great. Thank you, <laughs> The, the uh, next order of business um, is going to be to select the officers for the committee, and at least as the proposed bylaws, and granted they're not enacted, the proposed bylaws foresee the election of two officers, a chair and a vice chair. Um, and I believe that um, depending on how the group feels today, we could take action on that. Um, and um, you know, the chair could officially take over once the bylaws are, are um, enacted, um, and, I'm sorry, are voted upon. Um, but what is the pleasure of the, uh, the advisory committee with regards to the um, election of uh, I'd like to do the election tonight if it's at all possible instead of putting it off for yet another month. Are we going to take nominations or how are we going to do that? Well, if, if there's a consensus uh, for that, what I would suggest is that um, if individuals self-identify uh, as um, being interested in uh, the particular office and then we have ballots that you could cast your um, vote for uh, chair and vice chair. You could sort of fill in the name of the person that you would like to uh, vote for. I'll uh, second that. I'll second that. If we're doing it as a motion, I'll second that. We can do the election tonight. Okay, so we have had a, um, it's been moved and seconded to go ahead and um, move forward with the um, selection of the chair and vice chair. Um, the discussion in this case would be to identify, self-identify uh, individuals who might be interested in those positions. So I open it up to the group. Yeah. Um, Dr. Garcia, members of the committee, I would be interested in chair. So we have a, um, a an individual identified uh, and interested in serving as chair. Are there other folks who might be interested in chair or vice chair? Um, at this time? Anyone? Anyone? Do you look? <laughs> so I, I would think that a previous uh, PAC member as a vice chair might be great so that there is that back up. You're pointing at me, but honestly, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I can commit, commit the time to, to take on the vice chair role necessarily just with my schedule trying to just make it to these meetings and make it happen and be a productive member is going to be challenging right now. Uh, with Jim Show coming up for the next bunch of months for me and that kind of stuff. It's a little crazy. Okay, I'll throw my name out there. I would love that. Mm -hmm. So if we've had a, uh, another uh, identification of Pat as a uh, nominee. As long as Barry doesn't miss any needs. That's for the position of uh, vice chair. I have a confession. Okay. Um, and it's good that we talked about moving to other Thursdays of the month because this. Thursday in October, the third Thursday, and I do have a trip out of town that has been planned a long time in advance. Oh, see. <laughs> <laughs> it's all working. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, I, I, I'd like to make a motion that we, I'd like to move that we select Barry as chair and Pat as vice chair. I second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, elect um, Mr. Barry Gillespie and Ms. Pat Hubbard as our chair and vice chair for PAC Act 2.0. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Are there any abstentions? The vote is unanimous. So congratulations, Mr. Gillespie and Pat Hubbard. One of the other one of the other idiosyncratic things about our um, code it's not idiosyncratic but the the terms of um, membership the, the length of, of, um, of the terms are assigned at random um, there are three year and two year terms two year and four year two year and four year terms are what are described in the ordinance. Um, doesn't mean that if your appointing person wants you to be reappointed at the end of those two years, doesn't mean that that person can't do that. But it, initially, let me just tell you what the thinking was when we were crafting the ordinance language, was to have the ability, initially, we, we really had uh, envisioned the old PAC Act 
as slowly transitioning out. And, and the Board of Supervisors, whose job it is to direct the policy of this county, uh, directed me otherwise. Um, and, um, and so that's why the staggered term language is in there, because that was part of how we were going to transition uh, older and newer members. Um, so at this point, we will have um, two and four year terms. Um, and the idea is to select uh, those terms at random, right? Um, and so we have in our, we have in this, in, in this envelope, <laughs> Four. <laughs> four. <laughs> very strong. Uh, how many? How many four-year terms or how many two-year terms? Um, we have. Yes, please. For the community organizations, the code says through random selection, identify two members to serve four-year terms and three to serve two-year terms. For the board of supervisor appointees, it says randomly select three members for the four-year term and two members for the two-year term. And then for the county administrator, they're already set, those two. The two-year terms. You, you know, I, I really like the way we started this committee. I've been on this <laughs> term, you know, and I'll volunteer as one of the supervisors' appointment to be a two-year term. <laughs> I think we could. I think we could. I think we could make a. I think we could make a case that that, that is that that is uh, fine. Um, so the 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 board of supervisors appointees. So uh, for district one, um, do you want to self-select, or would you like to pull out a member from my? Uh, you can always trade with somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> I. I I, I, either or, it doesn't matter to me. I could do two or four. Well, I don't know, it's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's we went through all the trouble. Okay, I'm a volunteer for two, so I yeah. Yeah. Yes, we'll, we'll keep you guys too. And so, Dr. Garcia, if I may, I think as the, considering what I represent, I represent the two folks. Okay. Currently. Okay. So, pack partners too? I think so. Yeah. Pack partners. District 2. Right. We need, we need to find out. Can we actually ask for the we, So the, the county attorney's, the county attorney's uh, assessment was that it was not a conflict. Excellent. So you're good. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah. the county's attorney's, the, so one of the questions that came up is, is there a potential for a conflict of interest uh, given that Ms. Pena um, is a recently elected uh, official for yeah, one of our jurisdictional partners. Um, and the county attorney's determination That's was great. that that in and of itself did not constitute a conflict of interest. Um, that should an individual issue come up that was relevant and pertinent where there was a potential for conflict of interest, that at that point she would either recuse herself or she would, ask, she would be asked by the chair to recuse. Um, and so we don't think it's a problem. That's great. So. Thank you for that. We, we had asked that when we heard it, and we were like, uh oh, is she going to run into a problem with that? So that's great. So, um, so District 3 is, the District 3 appointee is Patty. So, Pat, we're going we're gonna to give you, we're gonna give you uh, one of the numbers in the box, or do you want to? I think I'll draw. Well, you just committed. You already hear what? Mr. Actually, the vice chair. You selected two. I selected two. So take that one. Out. <laughs> I like that. So there's four, four, four. Okay, four is two. So I. Think. Unless you guys get a pay raise tonight. Okay. <laughs> okay, so they're in there. So we're going to do Pat first. Please. Yes, we are. So just suck one of those pieces of paper. <laughs> Pat is four. Four years. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Okay. And then we've also got a small quiz. <laughs> Okay, so, so my question, my supervisor 
is finishing in January. I know. So, do I draw? Yes. Or do I wait and see if yes. I'm reappointed? Okay. You, you nice draw, try, right? Because the, <laughs> <laughs> the shortest term. <laughs> Like it's four. This the Juvie has four. Two. Okay, we're done. Um, yeah. Guess what she did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of years of no contact. <laughs> yes. Four, right? That's four. Okay. okay. All right. So don't make me think too hard. Uh, so uh, District One is four. Miss Ruby. District Two, uh, Miss Pena is four. District Three is four. District 4 is two years, and District 5 is two years. Does that make sense? Awesome. So now we're going to do the same process for the, um, for the organizational representatives. So in this case, um, Mr. Gillespie's and um, Mr. O'Connor's terms are predefined, so we don't need to have them. Um, we don't need to um, have them split the uh, uh, two twos and two fours. Right. Please. And you can start off on Okay. <laughs> two. Ms. Barrick is two. Yeah. I drew a two. Oh, that's right. I copied it. I copied it. Supervisor Extra, I drew a two. Hey, Chris, oh, and Oscar, sorry. He's two. No. no, it's just, uh, no, Chris, he has, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then, then Dr. Schnuck. Yes, and Dr. Schnuck is the other class. Four, what is that? Two. Four, two. <laughs> so, you can draw a piece of paper. Four, four. And Dr. Schnuck? Hi, Jeff. Very simple. Okay. So, um, Ms. Barrick, uh, two, Mr. Squire, two, uh, Dr. O'Donnell, four, uh, Ms. Holliger, two, uh, Dr. Smith, four. Cool. That was easy. So we have a chair, we have a vice chair, we have our terms worked out. We're almost done with the meeting. Yes. <laughs> we, yes. That would be a record. <laughs> we had a, um, uh, uh, we've already started the discussion of the committee meeting schedule. Uh, and, uh, and it's actually probably fortunate then that we looked at the second Thursday rather than the fourth. Um, and what was the other issue with regards to the meeting schedule that we needed to touch base on? Time. Four, the, the, four the four to six, six issue. issue and the timing in terms of whether it was the third the Thursday or not. Correct. So I think we've already come to a conclusion, but are there any other issues that are applicable with regards to the meeting schedule? Please realize that, that certainly the Board of Health exercises the ability to go on hiatus, uh, like one month during the summer, um, and maybe sometimes one month during the holidays, and you, it, it's up to your discretion to exercise that. We just need sufficient notice on the staff side to be able to um, notice that publicly. Come. So that's that discussion. So, when is the next so the next meeting would be on the second Thursday, the 13th of October, um, at four to six. Are, are we in agreement with that? I don't feel like we need to take a, a vote for that. Four two. Four two. Yes. yes. Awesome. The next item is a really happy item, and these are just back from the printer. Um, these are your official invitations to our groundbreaking. We will also receive them by. Um, you will also receive it electronically if you haven't done it. So, is there a board meeting on that day? No. On the day of the of the groundbreaking, no. The board of supervisors meeting in October is a subsequent Tuesday. There's very few and far between four meetings. Um, uh, two, yeah, four supervisors meeting between them. This is this is a, a major milestone, and I thought this is a great thing to share with Packing Point. We can get these two characters. So, 
send those out to donors. So, I, unfortunately, this can't be because of because of the construction that is ongoing, because of the fact that we need to operate. This can't be a huge um, sort of public splashy event. It's going to be a relatively small public event, um, and um, and uh, Supervisor Bronson is already committed to being there, as is um, the county administrator. Um, and we have, because this is so much in many ways the, the work uh, product of the previous advisory committee, we have also sent out electronic invitations to all the previous advisory committee members because I really think that they deserve part of the credit with this. Um, so um, if you um, please let us know if you're able to attend. Um, Jose and his team will be hosting us over at that site. I will probably be um, leading the event. So that actually, oh, um, one more scheduled agenda item, which we did not do last time, and which I would really, um, which I'm not remiss in not doing earlier in the agenda this time. What we had in the agenda was the adoption of the August 25th uh, meeting minutes. I don't know if folks had a chance to look at those. They are in your Zoom. So we sent those out electronically. Uh, and I will entertain a motion. To, I move to accept the minutes from us. And we have, it, it's been moved and seconded to accept the meeting minutes from August 25th, 2016. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Any abstentions? So this carries unanimously. Excellent. The next item is the call to the audience. Um, and for today's call to the audience, we have a single individual who has identified um, themselves as wishing to address the advisory committee. I'm going to invite Ms. Jo Wishney. Can you pull up a chair? Or Ms. Wishney? Um, to um, come up and join us and to talk to us for some three minutes or so. <laughs> Don't stress. <laughs> don't stress. And I have notes because I don't want to forget anything. If you could just identify yourself and yes. your address and, um, and your affiliation, if you want. Okay. My name is Joe Wishney. My address is 5239 North Tegel Drive. I am a volunteer at PAC, uh, a volunteer adoption counselor at PAC, which I have been doing for a year and four months. And I average about 47 volunteer hours a month. Um, I've attended a number of the PACAC meetings, including last month, which was the first meeting of the new committee, and the previous uh, meeting, which was the last meeting of the old committee. At both meetings, I listened to the PowerPoint presentation that Jose presented. Uh, it was very enlightening to me because I don't have the years and years of experience that go back um, with all of the information he was giving. My takeaway, however, is that um, I think the committee thinks that Operational problems are all solved, and now you're going to move into the future just doing strategic planning. Uh, and I want to say that um, a smooth presentation tied up in a pretty bow doesn't mean that everything is, is wonderful, you know, butterflies and rainbows, because it's not. Uh, throughout the presentation, I heard the term, with the support of the committee, PAC did this, or with the support of the committee, PAC did that. And the reality is um, that the, many of the changes and improvements in PAC were a result of the direction and urging of the committee. And I want to make sure that that would continue. Um, it goes without saying that PAC's made tremendous strides and come a long way in the last 10 years. But I'm speaking today to tell you that while strategic planning is important and needed, there are many operational problems yet to be fixed at PAC. And I, I think that because many of you are new to the committee, um, I, you may not realize that. I wanted you to know. Um, the success numbers are impressive, but they're a double-edged sword. There's a lot of emphasis on numbers, getting dogs out, how many dogs come in, how many go out. We, we're always at a push to get the dogs out the door. Um, the volunteer adoption counselors are the last line of defense to make sure that the animals leaving PAC are going to a good and proper home where they're going to live a ha happy and healthy life. Uh, we take our, our jobs very seriously. We follow the conversation-based protocol that is considered best practices. 
We interview the adopters and engage them in conversations that will elicit important information upon which to base a decision. Yet when we discern that the adoption of a particular animal to a particular adopter is in our opinion not an appropriate choice, or when we determine that a particular adopter may be hiding the truth, distorting information, or may be unqualified for any reason, and we feel they should be declined, we are thwarted, we are often thwarted by staff who sends the dog out the door anyway, just because they want to reduce the number. So that's how I believe why they do it. Um, the counselors are often met with derision and condescension by staff and subsequently overruled, often in the presence of the adopter or the public. We are told we are too emotional, relying on gut feelings. We're told it is the opinion of staff that we all hate people, uh, that we love dogs more, and feel that no one is good enough for the dogs. Nothing could be further from the truth. We enjoy our work and we care deeply about our adopters. We are thanked by them each and every day for the work we do. Many even become our personal friends. We are not always respected or valued by staff. Our decisions are not always respected and valued. We just spend 30 to 60 minutes with an adopter, but we are wrong and staff is right. If that is the case, why have adoption counselors? Just print an application, name, rank, and serial number. Do you have a pulse? Do you have a residence? Fine, here you go, have a dog or a cat. As I see it, as both a member of the volunteer ranks at PAC, and as a member of the Tucson community, PAC's first obligation is to the health and welfare of the animals. Only secondarily are we obligated to fulfill every wish of the community as respects their right to adopt. Adoption of animals at PAC is and should be a privilege and not a right. I relate this to you just as an example of operational issues that still remain. There are others, but I plan to work with our volunteer representative on the committee to help make the changes. I would like to invite each and every member of the committee to come to PAC and spend a day or a half day to see the facility firsthand, to take a tour with both staff and volunteers. It may sound like I'm just complaining, but I'm very proud of PAC and the work I do and would love to share it with you. Thank you for taking the time to be part of the committee. I look forward to the help you can provide to make PAC even better than it is today. And to rightly take its place among the premier animal shelters in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Really appreciate it. We don't have any other uh, items. Ms. My name is Nancy Mishkich, and I had the honor of serving on this committee for 22 years. I have been involved with the animal rescue for almost 30 years now. One of the things that I am going to recommend each community member do is make an appointment with enforcement, not only enforcement, but also with the county staff. And you go through it, and you spend an afternoon on the right walk. So you see what our officers are dealing with on the, the uh, field how they educate the public, um, and also observe some of the uh, procedures that are being done out of PAC. We have come a long way. We still need to tighten up some things. Um, there are people who are still going out and getting animals who cannot afford to feed animals or cannot provide pet care. Uh, I do volunteer for an organization that provides medical assistance, and too often I get calls saying, yeah, I got the dog for free. I need food. I don't get paid for two weeks. Or, I have a free vet visit, and they don't seem to understand that that free vet visit isn't for treatment. And I know it's exciting to get a new animal, but this is something that the committee needs to look at. And it, it is improving, but I still get lots of calls from people saying, well, yeah, I got a dog a month ago, can you take it? And we do recommend they return it to the safe haven of PAC if they cannot afford it. But um, you have a, a challenge before you, and um, I wish you luck. And Thank you for serving, but again, you need to, to get in the field and see what these guys are doing. You need to go out there and observe, because ultimately we are responsible for the head citizens of our community, and we do have some of the best laws and facilities and organizations 
in the country right here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Corey?
But I think that that's a great idea. You would sort of keep a running tab of, of what the issues are. Right. Uh, if, if I may, uh, two things. In the bylaws that we'll be looking at in between now and the next meeting, we put it in there that we would keep a running list mm -hmm. of agenda items. And we thought that would be nice. So for example, if a, an agenda item that you had requested or somebody had put on the agenda and it didn't get addressed over a period of three months or something, we can you know, we can say, you know, I really think this needs to be moved up because I want to hear it. That's one. And two, that you can send requests of, through the chair, but also that the chair is to work with staff. So I, I don't think we were creating any unreasonable expectation that if it's a complex thing that we want to say we want to review budget or statistics, those kind of things. We need to give staff reasonable time to prepare those, and I thought we could do that even by voter consensus. I think that's a very reasonable question. We had talked about having um, a manager report on the agenda as a routine. Would Jose be giving us that? Well, I think part, so of, uh, part of what we should probably define is what constitutes that manager's report, right? And to think about what is what is most reasonable. Um, I have suggested in the past creating uh, some sort of dashboard of <coughs> indicators that that at a very high level give you an idea of our operation. Um, and um, But I think we need to define what the manager's report would be. But, yeah. but I think it's yeah, agenda. Yes, it sure it could be. Next, next time, because that yes. sounds like a good mm -hmm. item to start off. Sure. So can we um, suggest agenda item now? It's up to um, the chair and vice chair if they want to hear agenda items um, at this time in this venue. I'm, I'm open to hearing them and we can list them and then we can look at the new staff. We had also talked about having, I think we talked about having the different department chairs on PAC come and speak to us on a, a different person each month come mm -hmm. and speak to us. So I don't know if that's an agenda item or if, how you want to organize that. And, and that would be kind of a standing agenda item, right? So, so that's how I was thinking about the manager's report, that perhaps one time the manager's report would focus on the adoption program. Another time, um, in, in response, for instance, to um, Ms. Wisney's uh, um, concerns, um, that another time the agenda, the manager's report would focus on fundraising, that another time the manager's report might focus on enforcement. And it doesn't mean that Jose would necessarily um, cover all those items uh, himself, but that the, the appropriate staff would be brought. But I do think that there are probably two or three, like I said, I call them dashboard indicators that you probably do want to have your eyes on on a regular basis, you know, um, because I think you want to be able to say, um, these are the numbers of animals we've adopted out. These are the number of enforcement actions that we've taken. I don't know what those dashboard items that you want are, but but I, I would suggest that that might be a way of, of doing the manager's report. That's part of why I think that you need to define that. So, Chair Gillespie, I would move then that that be one of the agenda items we have as a discussion of the dashboard concept for the manager's report at the next agenda, at the next meeting. Your second Seconded by Mayor uh, Member Smith. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Chair. Yes. With our open meeting laws, does the agenda need to be finalized a week out? Two weeks? What is our time? Frame? So, uh, ideally, we want to have a final agenda two weeks before we. Uh, that's a really good point, Ms. Um, Alstomus, uh, is that in order to be in compliance with our open meeting, obligations um, that I, I believe that we need to make sure that these specific items are included in the uh, notice uh, with as much specificity as possible. And it could be manager's report uh -huh. enforcement. Exactly. I mean, it, exactly. it could be simple. Mm -hmm. if that's what you're saying is put it together. Yeah. Okay. I may, may not comprehend this, but I would like to have, um, if a staff member is going to come and speak to this committee, would that be an agenda item? That we would put on there, it would be. Well, I would like to recommend that at our next meeting, Adam Ricky is there because I've been we run into each other quite frequently, and I would like for all of you to hear his plans, what he's done. He, it's really considering where we've been in enforcement, and we've been working to get changes in enforcement, and we've gone to the board of supervisors and asked them, you know, can we do something about enforcement? And finally, we've done something, right? Jose, so I would like for um, all of you to hear about where we're going 
So that could be called update on enforcement. Mm -hmm. A motion. I move. I already made a motion. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? Motion to move the second. Further discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So we'll have it on the agenda for the next meeting. Have him come Sorry. and talk to us about <laughs> you know an overview of, of where he is with his enforcement program and kind of orient us all to what's going on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, that's what I meant by sort of having deep dives into specific topics, right? And I would envision doing something very similar in shelter operations and in our clinical program um, so that people get some real granular feel for what's going on and I think that that's the point at which um, it would be really helpful to have some strategic input mm -hmm. right um, when we're talking about when we're talking about uh, enforcement um, when we're sharing with you what we're what our approach is that's the time to really inform uh, what it is that we're doing and, and provide suggestions and feedback so uh, I really like that structure uh, for the committee's pleasure, two of the items that were high on my list to get started in our work were one, maybe to have an overview uh, of the approved uh, fiscal year 1617 uh, budget, just you know, staff and what the numbers are. I'm not familiar with any of that. Um, just where you are with your program. And two would be to uh, have an orientation to any kind of standardized uh, statistics that we keep. As, as, as the PAC on the team. I, we don't necessarily have to do that at the next meeting, but I thought that those are items that would get us started and bring people to what's going on. And, and I believe that that is part of the reason why we need to have a conversation about what those dashboard indicators are and what we will do as staff is we will come up with a proposal for what we think is, is the kind of thing that would be meaningful uh, and uh, that can be produced on a monthly basis in an updated fashion so that you can track it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can decide whether there are too many, too few, um, or whether you want something different. Um, I'm going to join the committee, and I think everybody who made the first committee had a meeting with, well, I was at the time with Kim, James, and then a tour of the facility. Now, I know the facility is in a disarray right now. And I think it may be not fair to bring people into the, <laughs> the, the war zone. But at some point in time, I think it would be really good for the new members to have a tour of the facility and see what, what you're working under right now. They'll have a better idea of what's happening. And, and, it I, been there yet. and I'm going to defer to Jose, but I believe that we've done that with almost everybody. Oh, okay. um, but correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. And so one of the things we want to do is be able to give individualized scores to everybody. It's easier, you get one-on-one -on -one attention, and we can just kind of see the overview of the whole agency. And we could do that tomorrow. <laughs> it's good to see the disarray though. <laughs> because you can understand where we're coming from a little better. And, and, I, and I think that, that, you know, if you, if, I know we did that with all the volunteer applicants, all the volunteer representative applicants. And I know we've done that with some of the individuals or a process table, but if, if there is a desire for something like that, I know for instance Annie's been out there, um, um, but if there's a desire for something like that, I, Jose is the point of contact, um, so please reach out to him, and, and his team has been incredibly accommodating uh, in terms of being able to make it happen when it's convenient for you. Yeah, and I would say even if you've been out there before, it's much different now with construction going on. So even where our clinical spaces are, where we're admitting animals in there, it still would be a great refresher for people to come out. So you can email me, you can, you can chat after this, and set up a time so we can keep it going. So I would I would propose that um, that um, unless there's anything else that we um, do the summation. So the, the action items that we have from our uh, meeting today is um, all of the committee has been given a copy of the proposed bylaws. There was a vigorous discussion about that um, with the idea that we would come back and um, uh, vote on those bylaws. Uh, the officers have been selected with the outcome being that effective with the next meeting, uh, Mr. Gillespie 
will chair it, and Ms. Hubbard will be the vice chair for the committee. Um, the, um, the length of terms has been determined uh, per the code, uh, and the uh, meeting schedule has been finalized. Um, we have provided you notice about the PAC groundbreaking event, which will occur in October 4th. Um, and um, we have developed a process for identifying potential agenda items. Um, I think that constitutes the summary of the meeting. Did I miss any? Yes, we, uh, I didn't specifically say the second, but I said that we came up with a new meeting time and date. Um, so, but yes, it, it will be the second of the month. So I would propose that um, I, I would entertain a motion to adjourn um, what it is um, and um, look forward to this working with um, Eric and Pat on, and Jose on developing our agenda in the next um, two weeks. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs>